So, now if you follow what I am trying to express, I will give an example, follow the example very carefully. It may be slightly you know different kind of example that I am going to give you. Imagine I have told you, you are the user, I am the researcher trying to establish these facts in your mind, take that way. Imagine I have told you that I will take you to a wonderful landscape garden. You know what did I do by saying this? I have added a superlative called wonderful landscape garden. The moment I have given told you a wonderful landscape garden, you have registered that wonderful term. And what else you have registered? Landscape garden. And I said that I will take you to, that means it is not here somewhere else. These are three informations enter your mind through your hearing and now your sensation occurred. So, whether you are going to see that or do not going to see that, your mental process has already started ticking. Now, I will blindfold you, close your eyes with a napkin, blindfold you. Then I will take you to a car and then the car starts. Will you be able to tell me which car you are traveling in? In today's, I have checked with my students and the students you know if they have experienced different kind of cars, they immediately say yes sir I can, this is the kind of car. The point is what is the quality of the car, what is the engine noise, what is the seating position, is it a tall boy kind of car or is it a low floor bucket seats by which even I will tell you people are so much sensitive. Some of my students also has reacted sir, if you shut the door. I can make out is it a normal ordinary car or costly car. The moment ignition is on, even I am blindfolded I can at least differentiate is it an ordinary car, cheaper car or costlier car. Means what? Your mind is so, so strong in identifying all these you know nitty gritties that your reactions, your mental process keeps on going. Okay. Now, in this suppose I have taken to a car and then you are you can probably fairly say yes I am sitting on a very expensive car, contrary alternative no I am sitting on a very cheap car possible. Now, the car starts and you are sitting you are blindfolded minded you have not opened your eyes and I am sitting next to you not giving any more information I only give you the information that I am taking to a wonderful landscape site that is all no further information in your mind. So, your knowledge is only limited to that, but I would be asking your questions while traveling can you tell me which kind of car it is? You may not be able to say the make or the brand, but at least you can say what is the level of the technology of that car. You can say it is a, it's a very expensive car or it is a moderately expensive car or cheap car. This is how the mental process is working. Now, you keep on traveling. After we reached a spot, if I ask you, do you know how much kilometer you have traveled? Will you be able to tell? Probably no. But if I ask you, can you tell me how much time have you traveled? You will probably be. Mental process works. Now, this mental process tells you, you know, the amount of time you have been sitting blind and sitting in the seat and then trying to, you know, if not think about anything else but this landscape project which you are expecting to see, then probably you will be able to fairly judge the time that you have spent during travel. You may, you may say, yes, I think I have traveled 15 minutes but I would say it will be plus minus. But if, if you say that I have traveled 30 kilometers probably you will not be able to do because mind is not that capable of you know measuring the distance in terms of kilometers without seeing. If you would have seen probably you could have still made a rough judgment this is what is the process going on in your mind. Then the time at which I have taken you there at that particular point it is evening. If, if entire place is dark and you have come to that place, you are still blindfolded. I have taken you to a hotel, I have taken you to the first floor level. If I ask you do you know at which floor you are, you will be able to say. How would you say? Because your mind is counting the number of steps roughly. At least you know that you did not walk at the same level and entered a room you have gone up by steps and entered a room. That means, you must have not been in ground floor, must be upper floor. 
Now the mind is so strong to work that if suppose I take you to the second floor then your mind is going to count how many turns in the staircase have you taken. This is how the interesting part of mental process is and then once you do this you will be able to say I think I have come to the second floor level that is the result of perception. Then after that you enter a room your blindfold is removed you go outside the door to a balcony and you find it is all pitch dark pitch dark you cannot see anything you will not be able to say what lies forward you will not be able to say. So, your visual or is restricted in the absence of light and in the evening you will find that mostly the birds do not make sounds. So, you will not be able to make anything make out anything. So, no sound. So, you cannot make out whether it is a forest in front whether it is a it is a garden in front, but if you do hear the waves breaking then you probably will be able to say I think I am next to a sea. That means, your hearing now started becoming active eyes did not help. This is how the whole process will keep on going Okay, this much go to sleep next day morning wake up and then you go to the balcony and then you find a wonderful garden in front. Let me change that wonderful term you find a very ugly garden in front. What will be happening in your mind your perception is you will say this is a garden this is not a commercial center this is a garden. So, when I informed you about wonderful garden the garden matched you will qualify this ok this is garden, but I said wonderful, but you are seeing an ugly garden your mind is now going through the process of comparing I was told that it is a wonderful garden, but I find it to be ugly your intellection stage worked. If you see the whole process how you have gone through your sensation process went on for longer your perception process probably slightly started before, but still it is after sensation how in the sensation you have been told that it is wonderful garden you are going to go to and then you will see you heard sensation when then perception wonderful garden as an expectation and then you have traveled you know the cars you have traveled a long distance you have a time sense you have gone to the hotel and you have gone to the upper floors. So, you know the rise and then you have opened your eyes and then you found dark. So, you could not make anything, but your sensation is still working it is only some of the sensations are blocked the other sensations are still working and then intellection is I do not see anything in front. So, I cannot judge that is the intellectual result, but next day morning when you go out and you see it is a garden supposed to be wonderful, but it is ugly your mind of inter your intellection process continued and then you have inferred I have come to a garden which is ugly. This is result is called concept you have conceived what is concept you conceive something you have conceived that this is not a wonderful garden. Contrarily if suppose I have taken you to a place where I said wonderful garden, but in the front this is not a garden it is a slum only thing is unfortunately the slum did not make any noise. So, in the night you could not make it out, but you are now seeing a slum then your perception is now going to be cross checking with the checklist that you had before that it was supposed to be a garden it is not a garden it is a slum it was supposed to be a wonderful garden it is not wonderful at all it is a ugly slum and your concept at that particular point is I am seeing an ugly slum this is what is the whole mental process every user go through. Let me draw the example again from the zoo in the zoo what happens is your experience if you recollect you will find that you have you know that, that there is a cave and there is a tiger you went by the side of the wall and next is the moat and when you went there you found that the tiger was you know sunbathing on the edge of the water body the moat you went there your sensation is you saw your perception is that is tiger that is not a monkey your perception is knowledge by knowledge you know this is tiger not a monkey your perception is done your intellection is it appears to be a nice place the true kind of environment that has been given to the tiger that is your 
mental process. Now, let us go to the mental process of the tiger. The tiger was sunbathing, the tiger was hearing all the sounds. You went there and suddenly you become so excited and started making tiger, tiger. The moment you did this, the tiger you know woke up, looked at you, sensation process gone. The tiger then how it per perceives? They know that any other animal other than tiger is a threat to them. So, the tiger's perception is they are the threat, that means you are the threat in front. And what is the intellection process in which if suppose the threat is consolidated, the tiger will just simply get up and go and hide in the cave. You lose your chance, but that intellection is the tiger conceived the action that it should move out of this and go to a cave and take refuge. This is the entire mental process. Try with all animals, you will find. You must have seen in the zoo, you know, say whenever we design the zoo, our one of the primary concern is that we should, should try to create the nature as far as practical, as far as natural and original. And most of the current zoos are such that where you think you are out of place. In the earlier zoos in the urban areas, we used to think that the animals were out of place and we are the owners of it and the users, active users of it. But current days concept of the zoo design in the landscape is that we should, we the users, the viewer should feel that we are out of place and that is a place for the animals. That is where the national park has been designed. Okay. This is how the whole mental process is. I hope the point has been made clear. If you have further clarifications to seek, please write in your forum. I will be happy to clarify. There, there is another set of users perception, users uh, activities. These are very essential. I will tell you when you design the landscape, if you do not understand the behavioral patterns of the users, behavioral patterns which varies from age, sex, also the mental state, also the physical state. I will explain bit by bit. This point you pay attention to. Individual users, how does an individual user manifest? Every user, put yourself in the user's position and then try to see what I am saying. Every user has expectation of the mind. I will give one example. I am drawing a sketch here. Follow this. Suppose there is a park, city level park. We have roads, we have roads all around. This park which is being used by children for playing football and all other things. You want to go from this particular point to this particular point. This is your origin and this is your destination. When I am explaining this and you are listening to it, try to emulate yourself that you are doing it. You are trying to go from this origin to destination. You know what will be the common tendency? The common tendency of the people would be every individual, I will tell you, whether it is animal, whether it is human being, every individual is cut short. You cannot deny it. At the core of your heart, if you are honest, you cannot deny it. If you want to go from here to this, mind will measure how much distance you have to traverse to travel along this and then go to this, which is certainly trigonometrically longer than the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, since it is shorter, every individual will have a tendency for to go from here to here. They will. This is an expectation. I will design as a landscapist. I will first explain what is next. The first stage is here expectation of going from here to here direct. The cause is or other purpose is to minimize the energy. What is that energy? Energy of travel. Basically what happens is you know that your travel time has to be reduced. If you reduce your travel time, suppose you are walking in a car you do not care. But if you are walking, your travel time is directly correlated with your energy spent. So, the more longer the distance you traverse, more energy spent. And every, every animal and human being are always in the lookout of how to save energy, how to save individual personal energy and get the maximum results. 
the maximum result is going from here to here and the maximum minimum energy spent by going by this more energy spent by this. So, people will go by this done this is what is expectation. If suppose I allow this expectation to persist then what will happen is the tendency will come in. What is the tendency interesting your expectation is go from here to here by the shortest path and your tendency is to go by go from here to here by the shortest path that is a tendency and you will go. If I still do not stop you then what will happen is you will consolidate your tendency and ultimately go to the next stage called behavior. It will become your behavior to go from here to here. So, your expectation of going by shortest distance which has been consolidated by tendency you know because we did not stop you. So, tendency is to go if you frequently go you think about it if this was, this was your house and this was your school or college or office or market you would have always taken this. So, your tendency is to always minimize energy minimize energy go by shortest path and if nobody stops you then behavior and then interesting thing happens. The moment your behavior is that you go by this nobody stops you then automatically what you have done do you know you have created a path you have created this path you know in fact very this idea or this kind of phenomena has been very very lucidly explained by Christopher Alexander read his book called the pattern language read this book it is a wonderful book the pattern language if you read read like a story book it does not have a lot of complexity of equations and other things and you know mathematics it is the daily phenomena is explained so easily ok. These are these kind of things are discussed in that ok. Now, the point is if suppose behavior results in going regularly and this is a football field what will be the result ultimate effect ultimate effect is going to be that this particular space is going to be denuded of the vegetation there will be no grasses and since there will be no grasses in this then you will find that the whole green grass this is green part these are all green part and there is a yellow part means the bare soil which is contrary to the function of this particular field. Now, suddenly the whole you know the community woke up and they said my goodness our football field is being cut split and now we have a footpath over there we do not want it what now the landscape action starts. What is that action you want to stop that behavior to stop the behavior go backward you have to stop the behavior and to stop the behavior you have to also discourage the tendency of it and to discourage the tendency of it what you do is you have to basically you know reduce the chance of executing their expectations. So, do not fulfill their expectations what will you do very common solution you just make one small high fencing very common high fencing you do and you are very modest you do not want to make the you know fencing very high you just want to be very modestly indicating to people please do not cross see I have put a fence here and please do not cross you are not supposed to cross that is where the fence fine you had been modest but the users may not may not be that modest you know what the user will do now I am drawing a section of the fence if suppose see the first action I will tell you the first kind of action to give an idea is the sense of difference of place that you are not supposed to go from here to here or cut through. So, by you know how you do it we put bollards bollards means basically these are kind of posts that you do put there this bollards just an indication have you seen in the park that earlier they used to do nowadays people do not do because there is a security who will be whistling the uh, you know blowing the whistles and see in the you have a small plaque written keep off the grass that means do not step onto the grass it is only a very gentle way of reminding people that you are not supposed to step on the grass, but people are ruthless and people are doing it. So, then immediately put a security to blow the whistle telling that do not step on the grass these are all different ways of solving the problems, but actually in the landscape when you are creating such a large landscape how many people will you appoint. So, generally what we do is we take the help of the elements. Now, this if suppose the bollards I am drawing a section again you have just try to give an idea that this is this is the field 
and this is your road, please do not go. What will be now expectation? Expectation still persists. What will be the tendency? Interesting, the tendency is people will jump over it. What is the behavior? People will jump over it and go. So, you have not stopped really, you could not stop really. Then the designers become you know more you know <laughs> I would say wiser and what you do? You will be raising this boundary fencing up to what height? Up to the height that people cannot cross a scale, but do you know the child may not be able to cross this, a aged person may not be able to cross this, but the young person like you probably will just hang on to this and then ultimately jump. You will take this trouble only if you feel that taking this trouble is less costlier than going by shortcut. Then you will be doing this. Otherwise, you will say, No, 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 let me go by this. What happens is now you start raising your boundary wall or fence bit by bit, bit by bit, till the point that nobody can cross. Your whole landscape is now being as soon as you have given this, this particular boundary wall, then you have objected visual connectivity with the other people to the park. Now, from the section if you see that if somebody if the height is such that people are walking standing at this particular point, they cannot see the park then what is the point having the park over there which should be a visual delight. Then what we do is we change the material. The fencing that we have instead of putting wall we give a perforated fence. Once you get the perforated fence people can see through, but perforated means again chain link fences and all other metal fences or maybe a perforated brick walls. If it is chain link fences, then it becomes a very hard surfaces all around which you do not want to see. Then we add another element, we add creepers along with it, so that give green elements. So, basically, what happens is you will see just trying to negotiate the mental processes or the behavioral patterns of the users, we keep on adding elements by elements and try to be honest to the selection of elements, which makes a true landscape site. This, please do not forget. Have you noticed that you have given a fencing, you know, barbed wire fencing in your own house, and then you find very regularly a dog is trying to pass through the barbed wire because you have given the spacing such a dog can always pass, but of course, thief cannot or outsiders cannot. Just to obstruct that, what you do is just in front you put another set of vegetation hedge so that the barbed wire outside and the hedge inside. Now, even dogs cannot cross, but the hedge which you have given over there is a good fodder for a goat. Then what happens is suddenly you will find that some portion of your hedge is eaten away. So, what you do is you select that particular plant which is not attracting other cattle. This is how design by design by sequences you keep on changing your elements and ultimately you make a creation. Okay. So, this is very very important stage that you have to note. So, if I summarize this basically the first stage, the second stage and the third stage of the mental process that you take note of and then the user's manifestation do not disregard it. You know why you should not disregard it because one may be the user, but you are also an user to another landscape space. Just because you are designing you do not think that you are not you are free from all this kind of mental processes. you are also. So, I always say that always use whenever you are is designing a landscape you always use a concept called personal analogy. Analogy I might discuss later, but okay, I will just let me give a clear some idea about it. You know all those analogies which are very helpful in proceeding with the design of which one of the most important thing is the personal analogy. In the personal analogy means when you are designing for somebody, you put yourself in the shoes of the same person and you offer a solution and then try to analyze that particular solution yourself being an user. This is what is a personal analogy. And I will tell you the best designers of the world, they always use this personal analogy. They do not say it, it is inside at the back of their mind and they use it. What could be the other analogies? Other analogies like, like say it is fantasy analogy. You create a landscape which looks like fantasy. You create a landscape which is of symbolic nature. So, symbolic analogy, personal analogy, symbolic analogy, fantasy analogy mechanical analogy. What is mechanical analogy? If sometime if you listen to my lectures on the you know disturbed area landscape, in that case I will show you some examples. The mechanical analogy is the whole landscape looks like very mechanical. You have different kind of in, in IIT itself we have a 
kind of garden in which different mechanical items are displayed for the education of the children. So, if I go to that particular garden, it is not a flower garden, it is with a mechanical analogy. It is different gears, wheels, chains, such things. Okay. So, this you keep in mind. What next? We have discussed about the mental process. We will be leading to now the special form. So, the idea is that when you think about behavioral aspects, take note of the behavioral patterns of the users and then you design the special form. I will just give one small example with a very quick uh, diagrammatic thing. You know, the pattern of movement of people vary with the age group. A child in plan, let us look at it, a child wants to go from here to here. An aged person, this is for a child and this is for a aged person and this is for a weak or diseased person who is not well medically unfit. Okay. This is the origin this is destination wants to go here, wants to go here and the same here. You know what will be the kind of pattern of movement in plan? The aged person will go stroll like this. The weak person will go then stop, then again come, go here, then stop, then go here, stop, go here, stop and finally reach. What the child will do? The child I do not know, I am just drawing because I do not know the child will move in any direction. This is very interesting in plan. Now, what about the elevations? Again, achha, what will happen to the normal person? That I did not say. A normal person who has no business of enjoying landscape or something, he will go straight. He will not waste a single moment in you know hovering along this. This is very interesting in terms of, if I say in terms of plan, what will happen in elevation? origin destination the child will try to go up and then rise up and then this and then jump and go here. The aged person will try to go by a slope and then here. The weak person will go here sit again go down sit go up sit and go here and what this person will do he does not mind anything he just simply wants to go this. This is in section or elevation let us say elevation. This is interesting that means, the behavioral pattern of the people, the movement pattern of the people they are all very much guided by the age and sex and also the nature, the mental nature of those. So, what I suggest is that whenever you are planning in special form I will discuss some of these, whenever you are planning pay very strong attention to the behavioral patterns of the users. Is that okay? Then later we will discuss in the next lecture on the special form.